4,250 watt start and 3,500 watt running champion inverter generator. So I took it out, flipped it on its side. These are the parts that come with it. So you got a little axle bolt with a hole in it. That'll go through your wheel, through your frame right there. 12 volt, nine amp hour, 20 hour battery. Got some cotter keys here. So we'll take, shove one of them down there. And before you start it up, you're supposed to remove these spacers here. So you get a little tube there so your motor can ride on its motor mounts and not vibrate the thing to death. So you've also got one right there. So get those two orange pieces of plastic and those screws out of there. I guess if you got one hand and one leg, you can do this. All right, got that on. The next part is this. So you see how that's tapered, that flat spot of that. It's gonna go up against this when you lift up on it. Initial thoughts, the handle does not seem to tuck away and stay away. So it is gonna stick out, a little bit of a tripping hazard there. It is pretty easy to move around though. So we'll take it in the barn and get it set up. That's your dipstick for your oil. Anyway, you'll pull that out. This funnel comes with it. Sets in there like that. And it takes a little bit for you to do it, but you can put the, uh, pretty much the whole contents of this in there. Just kind of check your dipstick. You might overfill it a little bit. They send you more than enough oil. <clears throat> and then, that's the first thing you do. Don't be putting no gas in it or trying to start it because you do it with no oil, you'll burn it up. And then what I did beyond that is once I got the oil in it, I gave this, you know, some some turns or some a few pulls here. And it's you know, you can it's not super hard to pull, so that's good. So now I've got some lubrication stirred around. I'm gonna gas it up and uh, you know you've got a five hour run time with this. And then you'll change your oil, and after that, you can use synthetic. And the instruction said, don't go over 50% load for the first five hours, but during that five hours, vary your loads. So it's a 3,500-watt running generator, and half of 3,500 is going to be 1,750 watts. So maybe you want to get you a little heater, something like this, and run it on different voltage it or different uh well i'd have to see what it is here so that's a 1500 watt heater so this is not going to put me over and i could throw a 250 watt heat lamp on there for max and then i can i can sit here and i can vary this like every 20 or 30 minutes just kind of up and down that may be the easiest way to do it so since it's winter time I'm gonna fire this up, let it run for about 15 minutes and then stretch an extension cord from the barn to the house and set the heater in the house since I've got to break this in anyway and uh, just help supplement the heat a little bit. I like the fact it has a fuel filter but it obstructs trying to fill this up. So you have gotta be really careful or you will overflow and get fuel on your generator. And something that might help you with these new smart gas cans or whatever, they got a lip on them. Put it off the side here and then slowly ease into it and it will swirl the gasoline as you fill it. Get down in here. I should have showed you this beforehand. Right over in there is the pickup tube down in the bottom of it. And one thing you do not want to do is leave gas in here. When you use this, you use all the gas out of it, you'll drain it out of the carburetor. Otherwise, some people had this that I borrowed from and they said, just keep it for a while. They, when I went and borrowed this generator here, it's another one of these champions, different model. They have steel gas tanks and they're not coated with anything worth anything. So you can see the rust right there. They left this thing completely full of fuel. Well, when they did that, the ethanol will draw the water in. Look at the amount of rust in that tank. And that was perfectly good generator. 
it took me five hours to get this running and you can see that was the level of the gas how much it just had rust and stuff in the gas and they didn't do anything wrong other than just take and put gas in it and leave it and that's uh i use stable and stuff like that not a sponsor i have no sponsors so uh here we go we're gonna start this thing up and see how she runs we're gonna use the key fob the key fob comes attached to the generator unit so there's the key fob now we'll pair it up with it but before we do that we have to hook our battery cables up so these come zip tied together and they have covers for the cables you don't leave this hooked up all the time zip tie there i took it off here's the other portion right here that goes over to the starter i put a battery tender on it not a sponsor i have no sponsors and this thing the light was blinking so this battery according to the battery tender was less than 80 percent charge when i received it so i did top it off the little one amp trickle charger battery tender so let's plug this up first all right once it's plugged in it will look like that so there's your cables going off your motor and your battery cables coming down here don't wear jewelry around batteries bad stuff can happen so once this is plugged up you go to the other side over here and you will turn your fuel valve to on. It should come shipped with the fuel valve turned off. We turn it on and that will allow your carburetor. And by the way, this is the drain plug on your carburetor. When you store your generator, you'll turn this valve completely off. Let it run out of fuel completely. Then you can turn that off if you want to. And then catch the gas and the cup that's in this float get this thing completely dry and then you don't have all those corrosion issues all right so we've got a gas on and we're going to push this button once it starts blinking we'll push it one more time it chokes itself there you go So the exhaust comes out right there. I'm going to switch on and off the 250 watt load and listen to the background. Not a whole lot of change there. The first thing I plugged into it was kind of slow to start, but after that, it like it woke up or something. So they say do not have any loads plugged into it when you start it. 1750 watts. This is rather loud, but it is an open frame generator inverter unit. All right, I have noticed one thing. It doesn't like abrupt loads. So here's a heater, wide open, 1500 watts with a 250 watt light bulb outside. So we'll click on one, two, three, four, and you can really hear it idle up at that. So if you push the start button two times and it doesn't start, it'll keep doing it. And I counted up to about five cycles and then I pushed the button again and it quit trying to crank itself. So here, now we have this. I pushed that to turn it off, so we're gonna try this. There's no load. And there we go. Gotta love it. All right, here I'm at the end of a 50 foot extension cord going out the window. I'm gonna shut the door. And yes, I know I'm 
remodeling the house right now. So let's say I'm going to do this. Do it again, see if it shuts off. Okay, it shut off. I just got an LED light over here on my tomato plants that are starting to die because they're really old. All right, there we go. It started with a key fob, and you're not supposed to start it with any load on it, but that light bulb right there has got eight watts, so that don't count. Now they say right here in the instruction book, turn off all electrical loads, never start or stop the generator with them turned on, let it run several minutes. To stabilize the temperature of the engine and generator before turning it off, and then you can turn it off. You're maintaining it periodically, make sure the spark plug gap is 0 0.024 to 0 0.031 inches. Clean your air filter and then clean your spark arrestor. I bet that'll never be done by most people. As far as the battery goes, it's self charging if you use it every two weeks, if not. And for our maintenance schedule, It's the next day, the generator's cooled off. Gonna change the oil here. And they said before you do it, you should warm it up. It's about 39 degrees outside. So I can't remember if I gotta push that button first or if I can just do this, let's see. Nope, you gotta push the button first because I just plugged the battery back in, or actually. All right. Let's go. All right, 10 millimeter wrench, drain pan. Loosen that up. It's right there above the drain tube. After I drained several ounces back, I took the original container and just put it up over the spout, blocked it up there so it's not going to drip, and then I'll go to the store and come back. Now, provided that you don't have a tank full of gas, which I didn't even put a half tank in this before I ran it, you can tip it up like that, and it'll set by itself, and it'll continue to drain into that can so far. I got a fairly good bit out, and it had stopped dripping, but when I tip it, it started dripping some more. 